Hello, it's Johnny. Uh, the video got cut off, so I had to record it again on uh, the second part. Uh, first, we I was show, first time I showed you was how all the cable got you know put in here and how I put the uh, marquee light and how I solder it uh, where I solder it. Now I'm going to tie web all this cable underneath this uh, underneath this thing here, so that way it won't move everywhere and a little bit more neater because I don't want it to be like everywhere with it. So I'm trying to tie wrap this using a short tie wrap. So I keep everything in place a little bit. Look like this tie wrap is not working. I should have got the thinner one. I got this thick one. I cut it and it's not doing a good job. Okay, so I need everything facing this way because I'm plugging everything this way and make sure nothing is covered. Okay, so I'm gonna push it in. Now, before I do that, I need to take the SD card out. And this SD card is facing downward. So, it's facing downward like this. So that means that this cable, which plug the SD card in, it also had to face this way not this way okay this way All right, so you're gonna plug it in to the back of the of this car here where the SD card go that way you don't have to use you don't have to put the SD card directly to the I mean this is a great idea so you don't have to drill a hole right here so you can put your SD card a lot of people do that and this guy, he's pretty smart. Uh, he uh, he created this cable, so you don't have to go into the to the system. Okay, so I want to make sure the power is uh, still all the light is working. So let me go ahead and plug the power back in, make sure it works before I screw everything into the system. So my key light is on and the screen is on, but there's no video because I, I plug, I took the SD card out, so there's nothing gonna show up. There's no operating system. So it looks pretty good. All right, turn that off. All right, so I got the controller plug in and everything. All right, here's the bad one. Okay, so I'm gonna move it close to I went and took that uh, another heat sink that was plugged into the blue blue way. You don't need it. I, I took it off. All right, I'm gonna plug this in the back facing upward to the back of the of the case. That's where you're gonna store your image at. You're gonna put it right. Ah, I think I have a good spring. Pop away. Be careful because those, the back of that uh, retro arcade have a good spring where Raspberry Pi doesn't even have that spring yet and no clicking. So you have no idea if you put it in correctly all the way in or not. You hear the click. Let's click in. All right. So we're going to screw this on and then we're going to put all this together. Now I also have LED light. Excellent. That's what I want in the beginning. So let's see if everything worked out. Okay, I know I say that it might have a problem because I put an SD card, I mean the LED light in there. I don't know if it's going to kill the juice of the battery because the battery is only had one. Okay, I might have to put it underneath here because when I did that last time, it, it uh, I don't really want to put the cable underneath because it will block the fan so I'm gonna do move it out from the bottom and then screw this thing in here so first screw is the most important one stabilize everything Now, those of you who doesn't want to 
put the fan in you don't you don't have to watch this video this is mainly for people who want to put a fan in to make the system cooler so this is why I'm doing this because I, I Raspberry Pi does get heat up get hot when you left it running all day overnight Alright, just gonna screw those three and go ahead and screw the fourth one as well. Okay, so all the screw is screwing. Now I can unplug this power and now I'm going to bring this over here and plug this all in, okay? So this is the power, this is the audio. So let me plug the cable in, the controller first. So the controller, the silver part is going to face toward this side, uh, toward, that's toward the left, and the blue is going to go to the right. But yeah, pull the level up the black level up yeah pull that black level up and then when you once you put it in you're gonna push it down see that level go up and down and then you once you put the cable you're gonna push it down okay you're gonna push it down the same both sides same time Controls in. Then you're going to put the put this cable in. You're gonna have the silver facing backward, and this one you just slide in. That's it. You don't have to push push anything black thing in there. You just push it straight down where the blue is facing toward you, and the silver is facing back. You got that, you just press it straight down. Okay, the blue is facing toward you. All right. Now, this cable, I noticed that it was laying on top of the body, which is creating some kind of, see, bumpy burn. So when I put it in the case, I'm gonna turn it to the side. So it won't be touching this metal, which is burning the, the ribbon, okay, because of heat. See that? So I'm going to tilt it to the side before I plug it into the joystick. Alright, so power, uh, beat audio plug in. So let's plug the audio in. Okay, audio go back here. Now originally I was going to put a, a cable here and drill a hole back here for the HDMI. But when I purchased it, they sent me the wrong cable. They sent me a a mini version with the the mini HDMI so I guess I'm not gonna do it on this video but in the future once I do my second one third one I might go ahead and add that to my uh, option so I could I could use I could plug it plug it to the TV and play two player on the TV big screen so here I'm gonna just go ahead and plug the power in like so Okay, there's only right, the correct direction is, uh, there's only one direction to plug it in. The other direction won't work. So if you can't plug it in, I mean, you got to face the wrong direction. And then this one is the, this one is the level go up and down. Okay, you guys can see it. See the level go down and up. So you want to go up, then you're going to put the cable in, then press it down. Okay, the level. And then that's the last thing we're going to do before we plug it in. So we're going to have uh, the silver facing back and the dark black facing toward you. So we're going to put it in like this. And that's it. Okay. 
Now, once I put it in, I'm going to tilt this cable around, around this thing. I wonder if I could uh, go underneath it before I put it in. That way it will stay away from the power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it underneath this two cable. make it a little bit shorter but at least it's not touching this touching this all right and then I think that's it then you just close it. Alright, and then let's power up. Hopefully the video card is setting correctly. Okay, this is not running with the power, it's running directly from, so you see the mark here light up more. Good, beautiful. Now just FYI, those of you who, who are charging the system, if it's totally dead, you have to let it charge using the, the high voltage 2.5 to charge it for at least 10 minutes, same thing like the you know the the new wave toys, those big arcade that I purchased. They also need to be charged up for at least you know a couple of minutes before you could play it while charging. If you want to play while charging, you have to charge it before it's totally dead. If you play for two hour and a half, or two hour or two hour and a half, and it's dead, you're not able to charge and play at the same time. So you have to let it charge for a few minutes, maybe ten minutes and then you could turn it on and play. So if you think that, if you play for an hour and a half and you think the battery is running low, go ahead and plug it in. That way the game won't you know, die on you, okay? So, let me go in. Let me press start, make sure my sound is set up correctly. Speakers, not hundred percent. Okay. So look cool. Uh, I think somebody asked me about about the Game Boy. I'm gonna try to see if I could test the Game Boy real quick. I think the screen on this emulator they have the bezel. And I think the basil is covering the screen, so you cannot really see everything. Okay, this is more closer, it's better. And I'll, I will try to provide you the description. I have to go look for it, my previous order history. So I'll give you the hit, the link for everything that I'm using so you could uh, do the same, you know, purchase you know, this, this case that have all this thing to raise it up so that way you can put a fan below it. And this fan is very quiet, it's not noisy. Uh, I also purchased one before, it's also very quiet but it depends. Sometimes manufacturers have the defective one that is very noisy and some of them are not. So you want to go with the same vendor that you purchased from. If it's not noisy, then you want to keep with that company. But uh, let's see the Game Boy. Somebody asked me about Game Boy. They have an issue where the screen is so uh, big. 
and they can't it's not playable so let's go check it out check the regular Game Boy the, not the one with the hack this is Sega Genesis Nintendo DS, Game Boy Advance Game Boy okay So if if a game if a Game Boy is not appearing or you can't see everything, you will have to move the bezel. The bezel is like the border on the both side. I think I removed. Yeah, this is called the bezel. And if this bezel is is uh, is interfering you and you can't see everything, you have to remove those. Okay. So let's see if this one is okay or not. Yeah, I see his point. You can't see everything in the screen on a Game Boy Advance. Oh wow! Okay, so you have to move the basil and you have to change the resolution on this. Now, the best way to fix this is plug. Uh, okay, I'm gonna do a separate video how to fix this one because I didn't know there was a problem with this. But this is everything pretty much put it together. I'll do a separate video about put uh, putting also the artwork on it and I haven't decided what kind of artwork should I put on should I put Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition or should I make this uh, another Ninja Turtle or, or make it Galaga so give me an opinion what you think I should make this artwork look like what you like to see put on this screen and once we put the marquee it will look pretty cool you know it will light up so let me know and we could turn off the light and see if it looks cool or not. Right now, I have light shining on it because I'm doing video inside. But yes, I see the problem now where the screen is so big. You can So you have to plug a keyboard in and then set up the res uh, resolution on this, on all the Game Boy and save it. Uh, I think when it boot up, let me see if I could do this. If you boot up, I think you press a, a button right away. Okay, right here. When you press A, I forgot which which one. I <laughs> just keep on pressing it. Okay, you're gonna select your you select your D4 emulator, and then you could select the emulator ROM, select the D4 video mode. Okay, and. So we're gonna select the D D4 emulator mode. Okay, and then that's when you could change your screen size. I'm sorry. Okay, let me bring it close and look at through the recording. So right now you have to change that to whatever size you want. I think four by three is the standard one. I don't know what was set before. Uh this is the type of TV we're using. NTSCF. Someone's used that one. I'm gonna press OK. Alright. So I select the default emulator for the Game Boy. 